Welcome to Physical Chemistry 2. In the seventh lecture here in thermodynamics, we'll be delving deeper into the fundamental equations of thermodynamics and we'll be looking at uh, the Gibbs equations and Maxwell relations in more detail. So when considering uh, thermodynamic equations, I always found the following here in the box quite useful. Yeah? G equals H minus TS, H equals U plus PV, DU is DQ minus PDV. This is the chemist symphony. All right. So uh, in the chemist symphony, yeah, you can see uh, pretty much Gibbs in the first line. Yeah, in the second line, you have an expression for uh, the enthalpy, yeah, where the enthalpy H of a thermodynamic system is defined as uh, the addition of its internal energy and the product of its pressure and volume. Yeah, in the third line, uh, we have a special case of a first law, yeah, as we applied in the previous lecture, yeah, where the only work performed on the system is volumetric expansion. So that's our PDV term here. Yeah, and so far, We've learned about uh, uh, four thermodynamic functions that represent energy. Yeah, so we had this for U, H, A, and G. Um, and now we will first look at these functions in a little bit more detail yeah, and derive some important relations. Yeah, and we will be limiting ourselves to closed systems yeah, where we have exclusively pure homogeneous substances and the only work that may occur is in the form of volume expansion. Yeah, so according to the first law, uh, um, we find for the internal energy here equation 351. So the du is delta Q plus delta W. Yeah, and the heat exchange and the work performed is reversible as we discussed previously. Yeah, so now if we uh, replace delta Q reversible yeah, by this entropy term here, TDS. And if we replace uh, delta W reversible yeah, by the reversible volume work here, PDV, then we get our equation 352. So this is a direct substitution. Yeah, and now we know from previous uh, uh, lectures and from the chemist symphony that H equals U plus PV. Yeah? So if we differentiate this expression here uh, with respect to uh, DP and DV, yeah, then we get dH equals du yeah, plus PdV plus VdP. Yeah? Now we can plug this all this into our equation 352. Yeah? And we get an expression for the change in enthalpy. Yeah? dH equals TdS plus VdP. Yeah? So this is our equation 353 here. Yeah? Now remember, uh, our expression uh, free, free, uh, sorry, 338 yeah, for the Helmholtz free energy A yeah, that we uh, were working with previously. So uh, let's differentiate that uh, um, by uh, dt and ds. Yeah? So we get here dA equals du minus tds minus sdt. And we can plug that into our equation 353. Yeah? So we essentially uh, get here now an expression for the change in free energy, dA, yeah? as minus uh, SDT minus PDV. Yeah? So that's a very important one. So let's now do the same trick uh, using uh, Gibbs equation yeah? for free enthalpy, G. Yeah. Again, we've met this previously. So again, we can differentiate that. We get dG equals dH minus TDS minus SDT. Yeah, plug all of this together. And we get then um, our expression 355 here. Yeah, dG equals minus SDT plus VDP. Yeah, so easy peasy lemon squeezy. As you can see, starting with the first law, yeah, of thermodynamics, we have now derived uh, um, uh, yeah, we, four important equations pretty much that describe the energies yeah, du, dh, da, and dg. Yeah? So here we've done this all together. Yeah? So these four functions yeah, that are here now given in light blue are the four characteristic functions. And we'll see 
their importance uh, on the next slide. So we can easily remember these relations and others uh, that we can derive from them yeah, by uh, the scheme established by Guggenheim here at the center. Yeah? Um, so each of the four dependent variables yeah, here marked in red is surrounded by the two corresponding independent variables. Yeah? I marked them here in green. Yeah? Those in the left-hand column are positive. Yeah, so these are the terms in, in orange. Yeah? And the one in the right-hand column are negative. Yeah? These are the ones in blue. Yeah? So using only the thermodynamic quantities uh, UHAG yeah? and the uh, uh, corresponding independent uh, variables, uh, pressure, temperature, volume, and entropy, yeah, we can get, I think, 336 expressions, including the first partial differentials. Yeah? So now with the help of, uh, of our four characteristic functions, we can derive all of these as we need them. Yeah? Okay, so now let's have a look at the independent variables. Yeah? Temperature, pressure, entropy, and volume that appear in these equations. Yeah? We know that the characteristic functions yeah, are um, uh, total differentials, yeah? so the variables uh, uh, T, P, S and V must represent partial differential quotients. Yeah? So these are our equations 356 to 359 here. Yeah? And we can derive this relation also following the, the Guggenheim notation scheme here. Yeah? So the function standing at one corner, yeah? for example here T, results as a partial derivative of the energy function opposite to it in the scheme. Yeah? So for T, this will be U or H yeah? by delta S, yeah? the thermodynamic quantity directly opposite to it. So let's have a look at this yeah? in this animation here. So t to get a T, yeah? we take either the expression for H or U yeah? and uh, um, we essentially uh, uh, take the derivative uh, of uh, yeah by uh, by uh, entropy yeah at constant volume or pressure yeah so compare this with our expression 359 yeah to get a t we take delta u divided by delta s so these two yeah all of this is positive at constant volume or alternatively delta h by delta s yeah at constant pressure and all of this again positive yeah again guggenheim's notation is just a, a visual aid really and a, and a memory tool yeah so you can get to all of these relationships here at the bottom yeah by taking the derivatives of the correct uh, of the respective characteristic functions yeah, and solving for the variable you want yeah but it will take longer then so these relationships are important essentially in two ways. Yeah? On the one hand, they, they give relations between the different partial, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the partial differential quotients. Yeah? And on the other hand, they give you information about such important uh, questions as the temperature or pressure dependence yeah? of a free enthalpy um, and so on. And this we will need again later. We can uh, get further relations yeah, from the ones which we saw on the last slide. Yeah, if we consider that the mixed second partial differential quotients uh, must be equal to each other. Yeah, what does this mean? So if we take, um, for example, the second derivative of u uh, by s and v, yeah, here using 357, yeah, we essentially get to minus delta p uh, divided by delta s at constant v. Yeah? And if we take the second derivative of u by s and v using here equation 359, we get delta t by delta v at constant s, yeah? and they must be equal to one another. So from this, we essentially get our Maxwell relations, which you see here at the, at the bottom. Yeah? So here we have essentially delta t by delta v at constant s yeah? is equal to minus delta p by delta s at constant v. Yeah? So this is essentially the uh, again, this uh, this idea of a second derivative, and um, accordingly you can derive all the other uh, ones here as well. So they will be, 
I mean, again, um, no need to necessarily remember that. Yeah, just remember the transformation between them um, and they will come really useful for the calculations that we have uh, coming up. So at the beginning uh, of a thermodynamics course, we essentially said that we can express every thermodynamic quantity by a characteristic function and its derivatives. Yeah, and we want to do this uh, with two examples now. Yeah, so let's express the free energy and the internal energy uh, uh, by means of uh, the free uh, enthalpy yeah, and its derivatives. Yeah, so. Uh, via subtraction here, yeah, 339, we subtract from this 338, we get essentially our, our equations here, 364 and 365, yeah, so this is, this is uh, quite straightforward, so uh, G minus A, yeah, this is this part, equals H minus U, yeah, so the TS terms uh, cancel each other out, yeah, and we know that um, H equals U plus PV, so all of this must be done, uh, must be equal to PV, yeah? So uh, now we can essentially um, uh, uh, get uh, A onto the other side, so we get G equals A plus PV, yeah? So what do we learn from this? Well, uh, we see from this uh, that the free enthalpy G, yeah, and free energy are related to each other in the same way as the uh, enthalpy H and the internal energy U. Yeah? So G and A and H and U, they vary uh, and they differ only by the volume work. So this is essentially this PV term. Yeah? So that's straightforward. So now we can uh, solve this equation uh, uh, for the free energy A. Yeah? So we get here to equation 366. Yeah, and we can substitute V yeah, using one of our uh, uh, relationships yeah, we derived previously. Yeah, so this is essentially here V equals one of these uh, quotients. Yeah? Uh, so now we have an expression that relates uh, um, A yeah, to the change in free enthalpy. Yeah, delta G during volumetric expansion. Yeah, so that's very useful. So we can now uh, employ the same tricks yeah, as here, starting with a Gibbs free enthalpy. Yeah, so we see that over uh, here on the left hand side. Yeah, so we get an expression for the um, internal energy here. Yeah, uh, expressed as the free enthalpy. Um, sorry. Yeah, as a free enthalpy G, yeah, and uh, the entropy change, yeah, so this is here, this T term, and the volumetric work, yeah, so that is that P term here, yeah, so that's essentially U equals H minus PV equals G minus T times delta G over delta T at constant pressure minus P times delta, delta G over delta P at constant temperature, yeah. So equation 369 here. Yeah. So and like this, uh, we can derive many useful relationships. Yeah. Depending on the problem set. So this slide here is super important. So these are the most important relationships uh, we discuss in this chapter. Yeah. And they are so important uh, for our later considerations. Yeah. But I will essentially summarize them here again. Um, you will notice here. So these are the ones where, that we saw previously. Um, and you will notice uh, uh, two additions here, yeah, Massieu's function and Planck's function. Um, so they are given here just for completion, yeah, we will uh, see them in the later parts of physical chemistry for sure. Um, um, but you can see here that they both relate uh, uh, to the fundam fundamental energy variables, yeah, U, H, A or G, yeah, and they can all be derived using the four characteristic functions as well, yeah, they're just very special cases here. Um, so that's why they are listed as their own entities. Okay, so uh, and finally uh, here in point five, um, uh, the expressions for entropy, yeah, uh, they essentially relate back to our initial considerations uh, of changes of entropy, yeah, delta S expressed as heat capacities, C, yeah, over temperature. So our previous considerations uh, refer to pure homogeneous substances in a closed system. Yeah, 
So now we want to go a step further and consider closed uh, systems yeah, that consist either yeah, of a pure substance in two phases yeah, or a system with one phase yeah, which is composed of several components. Yeah? And we will also allow uh, chemical reactions to take place between these components. Yeah? Um, note here we have the functions needed to describe this system will depend on the amount of substance, yeah, that's our variable ni, and uh, sometimes also um, we can express this in terms of a reaction coordinate, yeah, or reaction time, that's our small chi, yeah, so we will circle back to that in lecture 8. So this dependence on n and chi uh, will apply equally to all the functions, yeah, for u, h, a, g, j, and y that we saw in the previous slide, yeah. So for now, we will limit ourselves here to the relations for the free energy, yeah, and the free enthalpy, yeah. So accordingly, if we plug in here our uh, um, uh, previous relations that we derived, yeah, we essentially get here our equations 378 and 379, yeah. So now consider uh, uh, that we keep all molar fractions constant. So we're not we're not generating any new substances. Yeah. So it means also that the change yeah, in substances is zero. Yeah. In that case, essentially our equations here 378 and 379 transform to the following. Yeah. So 380 and 381. So here we have dA equals delta A by delta T at constant volume and uh, uh, amount of substance times dT plus delta A by delta V yeah, at constant temperature times dV. Yeah. And for uh, our expression here yeah, for dG, we get delta G over delta T at constant pressure times dT plus delta G, delta G divided by delta P at constant temperature. Okay, so compare these two relationships now yeah, to the two characteristic functions above. Yeah, so here 354 and 355. So dg being this term uh, and dA being equal to this term. Yeah, so we can now find um, uh, uh, appropriate expressions yeah, for S uh, and for V, yeah, as well as P, yeah, as changes of a free energy A and the changes of a free energy, uh, free enthalpy G, yeah. So these are the following, yeah. So that means essentially just by comparing the form of these functions, yeah, we see here that minus S, which we find over here, yeah, times dT is, is equivalent yeah, to this expression here, delta A by delta T at constant V. Yeah. Uh, analogous minus S must also be equal to delta G by uh, delta T at constant pressure. Yeah, we get this, we get this from this equation here, yeah, and we see that here in this relationship as well. Okay. So we can now use Gibbs to call these partial differential quotients here the chemical potential. Yeah, and we introduce the letter mu for it. Yeah, we've met this relationship here on a couple of occasions already. And yeah, now we know where it actually comes from. So we can uh, reformulate our equations 378 yeah, for D8, yeah, for, for D A and 379 for D G in terms of these partial quotients, yeah. And using mu, yeah, the chemical potential, we get our equations 382 and 383. Yeah. So these equations uh, and the corresponding ones for U, H, G, uh, U, H, J, and Y, yeah, are called the Gibbs fundamental equations. Yeah. So they are also valid for open systems. Yeah, since we have not imposed any restrictions on the choice of DNI so far, yeah? and this will depend on the problem set. Yeah? And the equivalence here of uh, delta A by delta NI and delta G by delta NI uh, should become clear. Yeah? When we remember 
our considerations from our previous lecture on free energy. Yeah, this was on slide five on reversible work. Yeah, we can see this particularly really clearly yeah, if we again consider a closed system. Yeah? So in it, the change in substances, yeah, D and I, cannot be freely chosen. Yeah? And it depends uh, on all D and I, so essentially on all the sum. So now we have a great expression for the chemical potential and we've derived it from first principles. Uh, in the next lecture we'll be working with it a little bit more and we'll look at the chemical potential in pure and mixed phase systems.